Good morning, welcome and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first ever 24 hour readathon. I'm so excited, but I can't even lie to you guys. I'm doing this video because I have literally four library books that are due at the library very soon. One is already overdue, so we have to get through these books because I want to read them. That's why I checked them out. I, it's just taking me a while, you know? We are going to do the timer method, so I'm going to start a timer for 24 hours, and I'll definitely be pausing it and starting and going, that kind of thing, just because, hey, a girl's got to work, so I can't just read for 24 hours straight, even though sometimes I wish I could. Also, if you see all of my other timers going on right now, it's simply because I just got my wisdom teeth out, which also, if I'm talking weird, that's why. But I keep setting timers for myself to remind myself when I need to take certain medicines because, oh my gosh, they really pump you with the medicine after you get your wisdom teeth out. I'm going to start by reading Anxious People by Frederick Backman. I'm so excited to read this book because I've heard amazing things about it, even though I literally know nothing about it. But also, this is the one that's overdue at the library, so we've got to read this and return it. And I'm now starting my timer for 24 hours. <laughs> forever to find one but i'm now gonna start do not disturb by freedom mcfadden just kidding it changed my mind i'm gonna start the true love experiment because the audiobook is available on libby which also means that i can kind of switch between the audiobook and the physical copy but i do always feel a little bit weird about listening to romances i don't know why but i'm gonna try it we'll see how it goes also you saw i finished my first book with 21 hours and 45 minutes to go but that was a book i had already started so technically i finished a book but like not really but it was Britney Spears's memoir but I actually really enjoyed that and I love listening to memoirs she didn't narrate her own memoir but I swear I could hear her voice in the writing of the book which I love when memoirs do that like because some memoirs you feel like they didn't actually write it themselves so it almost feels like a ghostwriter wrote it but I felt like I could actually hear her in the book which is funny because I, I know absolutely nothing about Britney Spears and yet now I feel so connected to her after that book so it was really good I really recommend it I actually really liked the audiobook, so love that. I always feel weird reading memoirs, but like I said, when I'm listening and reading to memoirs, really what I'm looking for is to be able to hear the author's voice in it. And since I did get that from this one, loved it. While I'm here, we might as well talk about anxious people. I'm only on page 35, but I am eating this up like i'm so in love with it so far and this is my first book by this author so i had no idea what to expect going into this and oh my goodness it is so good so far like i'm captivated and if i didn't have to put this book down i probably wouldn't have i probably would have just kept going but yeah only 35 pages so far and i'm so excited to keep reading basically what i can gather so far is that it is about a man and his father and you honestly don't learn their names until like 20 or so pages into the book which i found really interesting but Basically, they both work for the police department, even though his dad really did not want him to work for the police department because the son kind of went through some things when he was younger that really made him want to help other people. And so he's doing this by joining the police department. But his dad, who obviously is a police officer, which I feel like I've said a million times already, didn't want him to do that. So there's a little bit of a rift. It's not a ton because you can really tell like the dad is so in love with his son in this book, but I'm obsessed with how it's narrated. It kind of keeps switching different chapters or different vibes. I just love it. Also, I feel like I'm late to the train on this one. I'm pretty sure one of the OG book talk books that were pretty popular back in the day, but I can't remember. I don't know, but I'm reading it now and it's good. I just want one romance book that does not describe the main girl love interest as petite. I don't know why, but that drives me crazy. You know what? Actually, I feel like it's because every single romance book calls the woman petite and then they call the man large and big and handsome and whatever and i'm like oh my goodness let's learn some new adjectives guys we can do it 
It's literally only 9.16 right now. And I've already accidentally fallen asleep once. But you know what? We're gonna try to read for as long as I can until I actually fall asleep, like for real fall asleep. But I somehow already lost my 24 hour timer, but I remember having 20 hours and 40 minutes left. So I'm starting that timer again. I don't know how I already have failed with the timer, but I have. But I also don't wanna switch back and forth between my books too much. So I'm going to go back to Anxious People and hopefully finish a lot of this book because I'm loving it right now. Literally I literally read like 30 pages of it this morning. Could not stop thinking about it. How's my hand taste? Does anyone else's cat do this? She gives me kisses all the time. This book keeps saying things like, if this didn't happen, then everything would be different. And like, it's just said that about multiple things. Like right now it's talking about Christmas lights and it said that, which I can't really explain that because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's like, yeah, I feel like that can be said about a lot of things in life. If this one little thing didn't happen, a lot of things would be different. But anyway, I don't know why I felt the need to point that out. I'm on page 67 and I still have 19 hours and 51 minutes left. I don't know much about police officers or anything to do with the law by any means. But Jack and Jim, who are the police officers in this book, kind of seem like they're bad at their job. And I don't want to be rude and say that. But like, when we get the little transcripts in this book, I'm like, guys what are you doing like at least when i watch tv dramas of cops interviewing suspects or like witnesses they do a much better job than jack and jim are doing right now i have 19 hours and 28 minutes left i'm actually gonna be done for the night so i'm ending today on page 87 of anxious people it's so good so far and right now it's actually reminding me of nine perfect strangers by leanne moriarty but i think that's just because right now we still haven't figured out how all of these people have connected like there's a of different chapters focused on different people but we have yet to figure out how they connect which i'm sure will be revealed to us later in the book but i feel like that's how nine perfect strangers was but i could be confused because i read that a while ago we just learned something about how two of the characters connect and i kid you not i just got full body what is it called i got goosebumps that's not what i was gonna say but i got goosebumps and like my whole body like had like a reaction to reading that that's crazy it was on page 102 and 103. You know how earlier I was like, oh, I'm really loving this book. Can't stop thinking about it. It's so good. Yeah, I'm on page 158 now. I have 17 hours and 55 minutes left on the clock. And honestly, I'm getting a little bit uninterested in the book. I'm still reading it and it's like, it's okay. It's just not as good as it was in the beginning. Good morning. I started reading this last night on my phone, which I'm kind of loving. I don't know why. It just feels nice to like read it on my phone instead of having to carry the book around. Or like when I'm laying down, I might be able to read like this. Y'all get it. You know what I'm talking about. But I'm now 65% of the way through and I'm on chapter 52, which is pretty good. Definitely think I'm going to finish it today because I actually woke up this morning thinking about this book, like wanting to read it, which I was actually so surprised about because I said last night that I wasn't super into it. I wasn't feeling it as much as I was in the beginning. Then all of a sudden I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, I need to read it. I'm definitely thinking I'm going to finish this book today because I have 16 hours and 37 minutes left on the clock and I want to get a lot read today. I definitely have time to. I actually have no plans today, which is not normal. Normally I have at least something going on. started chapter 64 so i'm 83% of the way through this book i can't even lie to you guys right now i did fall asleep for a little bit but that's just because i was laying in bed and i was tired so i might have fallen asleep for like 30 minutes but i'm not gonna change the timer because i don't really know like how long i fell asleep for but i'm at 15 hours right now 15 hours and one minute but i'm still really liking it i don't want to put it down but i am going to take a break head to jack's and i think i'm gonna read over there because he has a nice porch and it's so warm outside today and i want to sit outside so 
I think I'm gonna go head over there. Reading update. I have 13 and a half hours left and I've finished Anxious People. I'm giving this a four star. I really love how this author writes. I really liked the premise. It was really unique. How many times am I gonna say really? It was unique in the sense that I'd never read anything like this before. It definitely was not what I expected going into the book. And I also really liked that I felt like he tied everything together. I was reading the book waiting for him to tie everything together and he did and he did it so nicely. He did it so well to the point that if he mentioned something very small in the beginning, he would circle back to it. Not like everything, obviously, but like everything that was important, even if it was small, he would circle back to and I really appreciated that. It wasn't a five star because like I said, I was a little bit uninterested at one point and there's something that happens in here that just doesn't even make sense to me. But I mentioned earlier that I started the True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I am on page 111 and I've mostly listened to this, but I think I'm gonna sit down now and actually physically read it. I'm liking it so far, but it's definitely not wowing me. It's basically about this author who agrees to do a TV show similar to The Bachelorette where she's the only girl and there's a bunch of guys like kind of fighting for her. But the twist is that they pick out the guys using some science experiment DNA thing. Basically, if they have similar DNA in common, that's how they pick the guys. So definitely an interesting premise. Never read anything like this before. I'm about to lay down for bed. My only update right now is that I have 12 and a half hours left and I'm on chapter 23. It's the next day. I've been mostly listening to the audiobook today and I have 10 hours and three minutes left and I'm 78% of the way through the book. And honestly, at this point I am not liking it and I feel bad saying that because I did like it in the beginning their relationship seems way too physical for me but that's the only thing that I can pinpoint not liking everything else is like it's whatever I guess also maybe the main girl character is a little bit odd like her personality is very out there and I don't love when characters in books are like authors because then it's very hard for me to like immerse myself into the book because then I'm like oh like is this because Christina Lauren slash Christina and Lauren feel this way because they're authors, you know what I mean? Eight hours and 41 minutes and I have finished The True Love Experiment. I think I'm actually gonna start my next book so that I can have some time to think about how I feel about this one before I give you guys an in-depth review. So I'm either gonna start Meet in Manhattan or The Honey Don't List. I just don't know which one yet. Also, I meant to say it's the same day. I just changed because I got hot, but I decided to start The Honey Don't List and I'm like barely a couple pages into it. And I feel like they're literally trying to write about Chip and Joanna Gaines from that show on HGTV. Oh, Fixer Upper. And I kind of don't like that. I don't know why because I am a fan of Fixer Upper and I do like Chip and Joanna Gaines, but I don't like them. It's like they're obviously not coming out and saying that they're doing that, but it seems very obvious to me that that's what they're doing. And I don't know, that just doesn't really sit right with me, but I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna keep going. Good morning. Let's talk about yesterday because I feel like we barely talked yesterday. Also, current time is five hours and 32 minutes. I told you yesterday that I finished the True Love Experiment. And I just wanna say, I had no idea that this was the second book in a series. I normally always go to Goodreads and look up the book before I start it in case of things like that. And also so that I can mark it read in Goodreads or that I started reading it in Goodreads so that the dates are correct. Yeah, I, I for some reason didn't do that for this book. I don't know why, but that also means I didn't know that this book was the second book in a series. It's the second book after The Soulmate Equation and I heard of The Soulmate Equation. I don't know how that happened. We're gonna ignore it because it felt like a standalone book. Like, I don't feel like you had to read the first one to read this one, but hey, I didn't read the first one, so what do I know? Anyways, I think I'm gonna give this a three star. It was good, it was cute. I just, for whatever reason, could not get into the couple in this book. I couldn't root for them. And I feel like in a romance, I have to be able to root for the couple. Like, I have to at least like them. Just kind of middle of the road. I can see people really liking this if they end up falling for the couple in this book. I did not. And then I started The Honey Don't List, which we talked about a little bit. I was saying that it reminds me a lot of Chip and Joanna Gaines from HGTV, but the more I read, the more I was like, okay. It's similar, but it's definitely not them, like the way that they design houses and like I know that there's a TV show on HGTV that focuses on small spaces and like having things that are convertible so like your kitchen table can also like fold up and become a desk or something like that and they do that in this book so I'm glad it's not Chip and Joanna Gaines it might just be someone else that they're like loosely basing these characters off of but I'm about 47% of the way through and I was going to switch between the physical copy of the book and the audiobook but this is the kind of audiobook that doesn't number the chapters because like the 
book doesn't number the chapters, it just switches POVs. So I tried to do that a couple times, but it's just been so hard to find my spot in the book. So there's that. But honestly, I almost DNF'd this book when I was comparing the couple in it to Chip and Joanna because I did not like that. So I got over that. I stopped comparing them. They're their own characters now. But with all that being said, I think I'm mostly going to listen to the audiobook today because I want to finish the audiobook. It says I have four hours left. and 14 minutes left and I'm 77% the way through this book so I'm almost done and I'm still kind of feeling very middle of the road like there's nothing wrong with this book but there's nothing really good either it's just very so-so I'm not rooting for the couple I don't really care about the characters I could probably end the book here and go on my merry way and never think about it again but I'm so close that I want to finish it and I'm still listening to the audiobook which makes it a little bit easier at 80% the way through the book there's still this weird police plot line that we have not connected to yet at all as in like there's random pages of interviews and we don't know why like we have no idea what's happening like at all unless i missed something but i don't think i did like what is going on 92 percent of the way through this book and i'm honestly so ready for it to be done it's been a couple of hours i didn't want to come on here right after i finished the book because i didn't want to give you a review that i wasn't sure about and i really needed to think about this book i'm also gonna have a section at the end of this video where i'll have all of my thoughts on all the books that i've read just because i feel like when i have a more level head it's easier to review a book because right after i put this book down i was like oh it's horrible two star really it was not that bad as of right now i would probably give it a three like i said though sometimes it'll change i feel like for me books when it comes to rating them i need to sleep on it before i can say for sure the rating you know what i mean like i have an idea but i don't always know for sure that it's gonna stay that way but i might have done this book a disservice by starting made in manhattan because oh my gosh i'm loving made in manhattan right now but let's switch to this one i think my problem with this book in particular and maybe Christina Lauren as a whole is that I feel like I no longer like this type of romance and also I was kind of right the police part of the book was very unnecessary it felt almost like they were trying to add thriller suspense to a romance and it just didn't work anyways I'm kind of tired of talking about that we'll talk about it more later because I want to talk about Made in Manhattan this book is so cute so far I'm on page 62 it's actually such a short book but I've been thinking about it non-stop I like want to keep going with it. It. All I want to do is sit down and read this book. Basically, it's about this rich family who lives in New York. They run a company that stays in the family. So like the CEO is normally the son. But right now the grandma is the CEO because her son passed away like before he could have kids or so they think thoughts you learned in like the first chapter that he did have a kid so now they're kind of trying to navigate this kid who grew up very differently than they did since they're a very rich family in new york they're trying to navigate him becoming ceo well we don't know yet if he's going to become ceo but they kind of want to set him up to become ceo it's almost like they're test driving him but not really i don't know how to describe it but it's so good so far and it's giving enemies to lovers right now uh, i'm eating it up though i'm eating it up i've got 40 one minutes on the clock and i am on page 141 chapter 13 and i am loving this book so much i feel like you can already tell but i am eating it up like it's the kind of book where when i put it down all i think about is picking it back up again i just want to read it and honestly if i didn't have to work i didn't have a bunch of other things going on i probably would have read this book in one day that's how much i'm enjoying it and it's also like a cute quick little romance read and these type of books at least for me are the easiest to just sit down and binge and i mean that in the best way possible i'm gonna sit down and read as much of this as i can and that is it i've officially read for 24 hours i'm currently on page 189 and i'm thinking i'm just gonna go ahead and finish this book and then come back and give you guys my final wrap up of all the books i read in this video and my review of each one so it's the next day let's first start out with an overview of all the books i read in this video and the page counts plus like my total page count of what I read in 24 hours. I had already started The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. So I finished that one, which only had 104 pages left in it. Then I read Anxious People by Frederick Backman, which was 341 pages. Then I read The True Love Experiment by Christine.
Christina Lauren, which was 409 pages. Then I read The Honey Don't List, also by Christina Lauren, which was 308 pages. And then I read Made in Manhattan, which was 198 pages, which I started in the 24 hour span of time. I didn't finish, but then I finished last night. So don't worry, you'll still get a review on that one as well. So that's like one, two, three, three full books and two half books pretty much, which is a total of 1,360 pages, which is way more than I thought I would have in a span of 24 hours. That's crazy. And now for all of my in-depth reviews and ratings, starting off strong with Britney Spears' memoir, The Woman in Me. This was absolutely stunning. Her story is crazy. And I swear this book, like it felt like I was talking to her when I was reading it. And I love memoirs that are like that. That's why I'm rating this one a five star. And I always feel a little bit weird rating memoirs. And then I read Anxious People by Frederick Brackman, which I rated a four star. This was so good. His writing is amazing and such an interesting storyline. I've never read anything like it before. And then I read The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Also another interesting premise. I loved that it was kind of like The Bachelorette, but in a book form, but it didn't wow me. It was not the kind of romance that I really love, which is disappointing because I read another Christina Lauren book, The Honey Don't List, and I rated that a two star. And I'm starting to think maybe Christina Lauren's romances are not for me. I just loved Love and Other Words by them so much. I wanted to read more, but so far none of them have hit like Love and Other Words do. I'm also a little bit pickier when it comes to romances. I don't know why, but a romance that I did read and love in this video was Made in Manhattan. And I'm telling you guys, I sat down on my couch last night and finished that book. Like I didn't check my phone. I didn't check the time. I just sat down and read and I was fully engrossed in this book the entire time. And I love when books can do that when they make me forget about everything else going on around me. And that's exactly what this book did. I loved the romance. I loved the characters. And honestly, while I was reading, I was convinced that this would be a five star read. But as I got towards the end, there were just some things that I didn't love going down, but nothing horrible. It just made me realize it's not a five star. Why is this bothering me all of a sudden? And that is my review of the three slash five books I read in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what else you want to see from me. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!